Hello everyone. Thank you for joining. This is uh, Jamal Arif and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. We are continuing on the series of Container Engine on Kubernetes and in this video we are going to talk about how do you create a cluster uh, in OCI. Uh, so before we actually go and create a cluster, uh, there are some prerequisites that we need for uh, creating a Kubernetes cluster in OCI. Uh, number one uh, is that you, like by default, uh, there is a limit of three clusters per OCI region. Uh, if you are uh, the monthly universal credits or if you're using the pay-as-you-go promo account. Uh, you also need to have some uh, quota on the compute engine size because as you launch your Kubernetes cluster if, and if you want to launch any additional worker nodes, you need to have some kind of uh, quota available for your worker nodes. Now, let's, now from an IAM uh, policy perspective, like every other service, uh, you, the, it's the OKE service is also very tightly integrated with identity and access management. Uh, so, for the so uh, before we actually create the cluster, uh, there is a specific policy that needs to be created within the root compartment of your tenancy, which where you allow the service OKE to manage the resources on your behalf in your tenancy. So there is this, this statement which I am showing on the screen needs to be put in the uh, root compartment. Uh, and you just need to allow the service OK to manage all resources in tenancy. Uh, in fact, let me actually switch to the console and I'll show you some additional uh, uh, like individual IAM policy that you need, that you need uh, to launch a Kubernetes cluster. All right, so I'm logged into my console. Uh, I'm right now on the home page. I am uh, in, the, in the Phoenix region. So if I navigate to developer services to container cluster is OKE. Over here at the top, you can see that there are some basic requirements which is listed out. So if I click on uh, the cluster requirements, I can see that the first uh, requirement is to have a, a policy in the root compartment of your tenancy to allow service OKE to manage your resources in tenancy. In addition to that, uh, if you are, if as an individual user, you are not part of the administrator group, then your your user needs to have the following uh, individual uh, policies as well. So basically have the uh, manage policy, manage level uh, on the instance family in your own compartment, uh, have the ability to use the subnets, uh, read the virtual network families, use the virtual NICs, uh, and so on and so forth. Once you have the right kind of policies, uh, you can then go on and create a cluster. So for creating a cluster, just click on create cluster. You can define uh, a name, the Kubernetes version. The two that we currently support are listed out here. And then there are two options to create a Kubernetes cluster. You can go ahead with quick create or custom create. The quick create is a quick uh, option of creating a Kubernetes cluster where you don't have to uh, create a, a virtual cloud network and previously or some like prerequisites are not required. Uh, it actually would create the networking resources for you quickly. So for instance, if I go ahead and click, uh, if I select the quick create, I can see in the virtual cloud network or network resources area, it's already pre-populating and telling me that a, that a new VCN would be created. Uh, in this compartment. So there, there would be one VCN, one load balancer subnet and one worker node subnet. Both of these subnets are regional subnets. That's, that's why these are uh, like just, just one subnet is required. You can have private worker nodes or you can have public worker nodes. Um, I'm choosing to have private because it's always recommended to have your compute workloads or worker nodes as private. Now next we define uh, the node pool. The node pool is basically uh, telling me what what kind of uh, individual worker nodes would be launched in my Kubernetes cluster, where my actual pods or container applications would be running. So, for instance, right now uh, the uh, the node pool is defined as the shape of 1.1 virtual machine, and there would be three number of nodes. So, the, uh, across the three availability domains, these the three nodes would be separated out. I can also choose any other virtual machine shape that I that my uh, tenancy has access for. 
so for instance if i have any bare metal nodes they would also show up here and you can add the created bare metal nodes as your worker nodes as well um, if you go scroll down a bit down you can provide the public ssh key which basically uh, would allow you to directly ssh into the worker nodes and you can also add in kubernetes labels uh, the labels will automatically be applied to those individual hosts and then when you are deploying your container application you can uh, put that label in your yaml config of your pods when you're deploying the pods or deployment you can put that label and uh, the kubernetes will then take care of deploying the application only on those specific labels so you can have you can add additional pairs as well uh, as you go along uh, but you can add the kubernetes labels and then there are a couple of additional options that we uh, automatically allow as well which is kubernetes dashboard which is enabled and the helm is enabled as well once you have helm enabled you can easily manage your kubernetes resources using the helm packet manager so click on uh, create so it first creates the in the network resources so you can see it has created the virtual cloud network uh, there is also a NAT gateway which is created because of my private workloads. So in order to get connect the private workloads with internet, you will need a NAT gateway. So it has a NAT gateway as well. It creates the required route tables. It creates the required security lists and add the security rules in there as well. The required subnets and then the cluster is created. So now the cluster is in the creating mode. I'll just uh, stop the video for a couple of minutes it, it doesn't take more than like three to four or five minutes to create the cluster uh, and once it's uh, created i'll just start the video again so the cluster is uh, active now uh, and you can see the details on the details page so on the network information you can uh, see the vcn name uh, the quick v cluster that was created in the new vcn which uh, was created alongside with it uh, the pods cider range and the service cider range so these are internal kubernetes uh, cider ranges and uh, the cider which pods would get and if any services are created what's the cycle the services would be assigned uh, and then additional details on the uh, load balancer subnets that were created in the vcn the kubernetes variant uh, the what where the kubernetes uh, cluster exists right now the complete uh, uh, details of that and then the node node pools so the currently we had node pools which were based across the three AD. So you can see AD1, AD2, and AD3. And it also lists the subnet. So basically it's the same regional subnet across the three availability domains and the three nodes. Once the master is active, you can see that on the worker nodes, they have started to come up. And now it's installing the basic uh, software like uh, container runtime of Docker and an, an additional uh, software related on the Kubernetes cluster uh, and once it's available it would uh, like change the sign to active uh, there is no public ip associated with these uh, nodes because there's no um, there's no like these are no pub these are not public uh, subnets these are only private subnets on the left hand side in the resources section you can see details of any uh, like worker work request which basically uh, like show you what are the apis which are being called to create the cluster and any individual components like node pool create and in, and uh, cluster create in the quick start it gives you some additional details like how do you access the cube config file uh, how do you then use that cube config file to directly get access to the cluster using something like cube cuttle and uh, see the cube versions or just create a basic application it also gives you a quick link to how do you access the Kubernetes dashboard. In the next video, we'll take a look at how do you connect to the created Kubernetes cluster uh, and how you can access the Kubernetes dashboard. Thank you once again, and please join us in the next video.